Welcome back to the Retro Remix project in Unity. In this video we will take a closer look at the Lemurs game. Make sure to set the aspect ratio to 640 by 480. And let's take a look at the main menu scene first. So you can find it in the scenes folder, Lemurs and main menu. There is as always a camera in here, a game manager, and the game manager is a singleton that does not get destroyed on scene changes like in the roller maze game and the game manager has the task of controlling the flow of the game like loading the levels and so on. You can see here like in roller maze we have a list of levels we can play in the game. Right now we have two levels and you may have noticed we only have one level scene. In Roller Maze we had a scene for each level and in this game here it's a bit special in that regard that we only have one scene no matter how many levels we have. And the reason for that is that I created the first level, made a scene for it, then I created the second level, made another scene for it and then I realized there is not so much difference between the scenes and the tasks that a scene has to do are almost the same and the differences between the levels could be just configured in a scriptable object. So these are again scriptable objects and when we take a look at them you can see these are all the information that a level needs. For example we need to know where the spawn position of the lemurs is, the exit position where they can exit the level, a spawn rate of the lemurs, the texture of the level, that is the image of the level where you can play in. And you can configure how many lemurs you want to have, how many you have to save, that's a percentage rate, time limit in seconds, the rating, it's just an information for the player how hard the level is, is it fun or hard. It's just the textual information, the level name and an access code. We will come to that in a minute. With that you can jump directly to any level from the select level screen. You can also set how many abilities you want to have in that level. And the abilities are the commands you can give the lemurs and what they should do. For example, the blocker ability we have an amount of 10, so you can 10 times assign the blocking task to a lemur. And you can see these are quite excessive and we have almost all abilities here. So the first level is just to experiment with the abilities and to see what they can do. So it's not really a puzzle or a challenge. The second level is a little bit more harder and you can see there are very limited abilities and resources in here. Only the abilities that are needed to solve are in here. And also you can configure what music to play. So again, for all these different levels we have in the game, there is only one level scene that takes the information from the scriptable objects and configures the level. Then there's a canvas for the UI in the scene. And there's a small UI manager script that handles uh, button clicks. And you can see, for example, if you select this play game button, in the on click action, the UI manager is called with the function start one player game. And for this button, the enter level code is called. And what that does, it just displays the code menu. It's just another panel. And it just has a text field with the header and the background image of the text box and a code field to input the text and a result message in case the code is wrong. And one specialty about this code field, you can see it's just a text field. It's not a text input field. So you can't directly type in here. And the reason for that is that this font here we use in that game is a bitmap font. What that means 
if we find that font in the fonts folder. It's a text mesh pro font asset like the others, but it is based on a bitmap, on that one here. Let's open it. So the letters are not based on normal letters, but on an image. So you can draw your own font with that and make it as beautiful and colorful as you like. And that is a bit complicated to set up. There is no straightforward way to do that in TextMesh Pro. And I will put a link in the description to the Unity forum where the instructions are given. And we will also have another video on that topic. Basically, you have to create the single characters you want to have in that font by saying where to find it in the bitmap. And why is that a problem with the text input field? Let's just quickly add such an input field. And then we need to set the text content of the field to the bitmap font. And you can see on entering small letters, nothing changes because our bitmap font only has capital letters. And when we enter capital letters, they are too small. So let's just raise the font size. And delete the other letters. And you can see they are rendered wrong. I don't know if it's a bug with Text Mesh Pro or it's not possible to use bitmap fonts in these input fields, but that's the way it is. So to go around that restriction, this is just a text field. Let's delete it. The code menu itself has a script that has a reference to the text field where the code is displayed and it's listening in its update loop for keystrokes on the keyboard. And whenever a letter is typed from the player from A to Z, it gets inserted into this text field, as you can see. When we start typing here, we don't have to be in that field because it's no text field. We can click anywhere and type and the letters replace the dashes. And it's always a 10 digit code. And if we type 10 digits, we get the message in correct code because that's no code that is part of any level. For example, let's take a look at the levels. You can find the definitions for the levels in the scripts, lemurs, and scriptable objects. And for level two, for example, the access code is just 10 A's. So let's just quickly deactivate that menu again and then take a look at the actual level scene. So here we are and as usual you can see the level in the game view and you might wonder this is the UI part and it's as huge as usual and in general the actual level, like in Roller Maze, is a lot smaller. And that has to do with the fact how you import your assets. An example. This is our level background for scene one. And usually you set the pixels per unit to 100, or that's the default at least. And that means that 100 pixels of the image is one unit in Unity. One unit is what you can see in the grid, for example. And these units are also used in transforms. For example, this object is positioned at 170.3999 units on the x-axis. And there is a good reason that we set the pixels per unit for this game to one pixel, because then each unit in Unity represents one pixel in the image. 
And when the image is positioned at the 0, 0 coordinates in the lower left corner, then we know when a game object is positioned at position 100x and 200y, then we can look up that value in the texture. When we go 100 pixels in x direction, 200 in y, we will find the pixel at that unity position. And why that is useful has to do with the method how we check for collisions in this game. Usually when you have to deal with collisions in Unity you think of colliders and rigid bodies and so on. And when I started the project I was thinking okay we can draw a few colliders in here or I can use a large polygon collider and trace the outlines of the image. And then when the lemurs walk and have a rigid body attached to them, they can check for collisions and don't fall through the geometry of the level. But it quickly was clear that that's not a good solution because you can assign tasks to the lemurs and most of the tasks change. For example, if you let a lemur dig into the ground, then it will dig a hole and you change the level pixel by pixel. So if you have a big collider, you need to adjust the collider as well because when there is a hole Lima should fall into it and I'm sure it can be done but it seems like a very complex and stressful task so the much easier way is just to take a look at the image and you may notice that the whole background is black and the other graphics are not and that means everything that is black is walkable for the lemurs and everything that's not is blocking the lemurs. They can of course walk up a ramp here but they don't fall through these blocks and they can't continue on that wall for example. So the collision mechanic in the game is just looking is the pixel black then I can walk or is it not black then I cannot walk. And also for the tasks you can give the lemurs the digging task can only take place as long as there is no black pixel under the lemur. And when the lemur finishes its work here and there are only black pixels left, then it just starts falling down. And the beauty of that approach is when you change the level image in any way, like digging or when a lemur explodes, he leaves a crater, the only thing you have to do is paint black pixels where you want to have a hole and then the collision will immediately detect the pixels and consider it a walkable area. There's no need to handle multiple colliders or to calculate the large polygon collider. It's just all in the texture. How to write those black pixels to the image and how to read them from the texture? We will take a closer look at that in another video when we look in the code. Let's continue with the contents of the scene. We have the game manager here and it's the same prefab as in the main menu. And it's the same that I already mentioned in the roller maze tutorial. We have it here so we can test this level out and it will get destroyed automatically when we arrive from the main menu. So again, there's always only one game manager in the scene. And in roller maze, we could test the levels by just opening the scene for each level. So if we want to test level 2, we open level scene 2. And that's not possible here because we only have one scene. So what to do if we want to test level 2? That's easy enough. The game manager has a field exposed current level and there you can set which level you want to play when the game starts. When the level scene starts, the level manager, we will take a look at that in a minute, will ask the game manager, hey, what level I'm on? And please give me the scriptable object to that level. And then I do everything to set up the level and start the game. So we can try it out. And this is just the first level because the current level here is zero. And you can see it's the first level indeed. And when we stop and set this to one, Let's start again. We arrive at the second level. 
please note, as this is the same game manager prefab as in the main menu, you can insert the value here, but you should not override the prefab because if you apply the changes, then the current level will be one for the prefab and also for the prefab when we come from the main menu. And so when we start the game from the main menu, it will start from level two. And a side note, in case you're wondering, level one means level two and level zero means level one. That's because the lists in C sharp are zero based, meaning the first element has the index of zero and so on. Another side note, if you notice this error message, don't be worried. It's just the side effect of the bitmap font we are using and Text Mesh Pro is trying to find it after we stop the game, but it's already destroyed. So it's only an error message you get when you stop the game and it's nothing to worry about. Let's take a look at the main canvas now. We have the background bar at the bottom of the screen and there are several buttons you can see here with the abilities and also to increase and decrease the spawn rate to pause the game and to explode all limos. These buttons are no standard unity buttons but they are based on them. It's a script called extended button and the script derives from the unity button and extends it. So there's a lot that is similar to the unity button. It also has the same on click functionality where we can set what action to take when the button is clicked. But the additional functionality is mark as selected. So when we click the button, it will get a yellow rectangle around it to make clear that that's the currently selected button. You can make a button a hold down button. That means, for example, the plus button is such a button. If you hold down your mouse pointer, then the action will get called repeatedly. And you can set the repeating time here in that field. And this means every 0.1 second this action gets called as long as you hold down the button. And the third extension is use double click. For example, this explosion for all lemurs button is a very dangerous operation and can't be accidentally triggered by clicking on it. It uses the double click feature, so you have to double click on that button to trigger that action. All these buttons find their respective actions in the level UI manager, which is just a script on the main canvas. It has information about all the text fields in the UI and other elements that can be displayed, for example, the start screen or the resume screen. And the level UI manager just takes the input from the user from these buttons and delegates the tasks accordingly. For the ability buttons, we have the same functionality for all of them. And here we have an enum. Sadly, you can't use an enum as a parameter here. So we have to write them here as string and in the code they get converted to the correct enum. We will take a closer look at that in another video. And we have also the mouse cursor. That's just a replacement for the normal mouse. We have on the start of the game, the mouse pointer gets set invisible and the mouse cursor script just tracks the position of the mouse and sets the sprite to display like this plus sign or when we're hovering over a limo then it changes to this one. Then we of course have the beautiful mini map. Let's just start it to see what it does. It just displays a small version of the image of the level and also displays all lemurs as small yellow dots. And the way that works is the minimap just reads the texture information from the image out and converts every pixel that is not passable to green and leaves every black pixel black and also tracks the positions of each lemur and puts them on the map as yellow dots. You can also 
move the minimap around to navigate in the level. And I think this will be worth another tutorial. The status text is just how many lemurs are out and the percentage of lemurs in and the remaining time. This gets updated every frame. Lemur info text is just a text that is displayed when you are hovering over lemur and it shows what that lemur can do at that time. And we have a start panel. Let's stop it for a minute. It's that display of a small version of the upcoming map and the information that is configured in the scriptable object for each level. Similar to that is the resume panel. You can see anything here, but the text on that gets generated when the player finishes a level and the success or failure of the level is displayed here. Also the level code with which the player can access that level from the main menu. And we have a fade black panel. This is used for fading between the different screens. If we click here and it fades to black and the level is displayed. And if you watch closely, the alpha value of the color just gets animated to get this effect. Then we have the level manager and that's another script of course. And the task of that script is to set up the level according to the scriptable objects connected to each level. Let's fold it out. We have for example the level renderer which is a sprite renderer that displays the image of the level. And when the level gets loaded, the level manager asks the game manager for the current level information and then takes the image and creates a sprite from it and gives it to the level renderer. So the background is set accordingly. It also has a reference to the lemur prefab because it spawns lemurs constantly and the exit gate and the spawn gate because these are set according to the scriptable object information. So what you need to do to create a new level is to go to scripts, scriptable objects and here you can duplicate that one or you can go to assets, create scriptable objects lemurs and level data. And then you can fill in all the information here and add level music and of course a level image. Find the game manager prefab and add a new level here and just drag the scriptable object in here. And that's it. And the level manager just looks up the information in the scriptable object and renders the level accordingly. Before we end this part of the video, let's just take one last look at the level when a few lemurs are spawned. You can see the level manager spawns them as children of itself. And each spawned lemur has a lemur script and that is a rather big script. We will take a closer look at that in another video. It has a sprite renderer to display the lemur, of course, and an animator that handles all the animation. As you can see right now, the walking animation or the falling animation is displayed and also the destroying animation. The interesting part is that these animations are not connected by transitions. For example, there's only one transition between falling start and the falling loop animation, but the other animations are all triggered by the code. The level manager also knows what ability is selected. When we click on a button, the UI manager is detecting that click 
and setting the ability in the level manager accordingly. And when we click a lemur, then that selected ability will be assigned to that lemur. So lemur and level manager are playing closely together. And the level manager is also a bigger script we will take a look at in another video. So that's for now. If you are having any questions so far, just let me know in the comments or on the Discord server. The inner workings and how everything ties together will be much more clear when we take a closer look in the code in later videos. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss those. Until then, take care and happy creating!